Yeah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the last interview of the day will be in English. Um, uh, hello, Eddie Wouters, your Vice President Logistics Europe uh, of APL Logistics, an American-based uh, company, uh, which is also uh, working worldwide. APL, you know, uh, it's, the, uh, uh, it's a big uh, uh, shipping line and uh, APL Logistics is something completely different. Uh, what are you doing exactly, Eddie? Well, thank you for inviting me here. Um, but the most pleasant surprise is to see that our company name is right here um, on one of your articles saying that we will get a new CEO as from 1st of January next year. Our parent company is NOL, uh, based in Singapore. 33% um, of the shares are on the stock market, so we trade on the market, but 67% are in the hands of Temasek, which is a, a wealth fund of the Singapore state. Um, we have two divisions, as you know, APL, which is the liner company, ocean transportation, containers, and APL Logistics is the logistics arm. And for many people, that means just moving boxes around on the ground or by rail. Uh, but AP Logistics is very different. Uh, since about 30 years, we started in America as a buyer's consolidation company, help retailers organize their Asia supply chains, which were getting more and more complex. And from that, we have evolved in 30 years to a $1.5 billion company that offers services across the globe, uh, from PO management to the forwarding itself, the um, uh, land transport, uh, all the customs clearance, the warehousing, and even delivery up to stores. So we've gone from a very narrow logistics player that is part of a shipping company to a, a rather broad, although admittedly still mid-sized company working uh, across the globe. Yeah, uh, you're working across the globe. That means you're also working in uh, in Europe. Um, what do you do here? What are uh, quite the same like in the United States or do you have different business models? It is somewhat different. We came to Europe about 10 years ago only uh, and we came with our international products, typically helping people uh, optimize their supply chains from Asia with PO management and complex visibility programs. It is now a new development in our business that uh, although we already have four, um, about four million square meters of warehouse space across the world, mostly in North America, we are now also intending to offer warehouse and distribution services in Europe to our global customers who use us already in different parts of the world and with whom we would like to develop that in, in Europe. Can you give a concrete example uh, of a, a, a customer solution you are delivering? Uh, yes, uh, in Germany for instance, which is probably relevant here, we, um, we have a, a, a suite of services for one of the retail companies called Esprit. Um, you see, for Esprit we basically do all the PO management worldwide. We are actually lead logistics provider uh, in all the countries worldwide where we help them steer their forwarders, their carriers. Uh, we're also part of their freight forwarding solution. And when the cargo gets here, we actually help them do the transport to the DC. And we even do distribution to wholesale as well as retail distribution where we deliver at night to their stores in about 14 countries in Europe. So it's an example where we are not just an international player doing Asia-based vendor management, but we are going deeper and deeper into their supply chain, helping them to optimize all the parts of the chain. So you're in distribution. Are you a member of a distribution network in Europe or you plan to join one? It's a good question. We are not today. But actually, as I speak, we are scanning the market and we will select a suitable partner uh, very soon because obviously without that, it would be hard to compete and operate. Um, are you uh, planning to invest in, in own uh, logistics assets like uh, warehouses or um, uh, logistics centers? We will definitely operate our own operations, warehouse operations. Whether we will take the full lease and invest in the buildings is another question and it will depend on the, the customer's preferences as well. Um, and we have a mixed solution in North America where we, partly we are owner of the building and partly we're not. But definitely our own operations are supported by our systems. Do you have a special focus on certain industries? Retail is one, uh, fast moving consumer goods is two, and I would say electronic, uh, electronic business, consumer electronics as a third one. We do quite a lot of automotive business in China and North America, okay. although we don't have that in our primary focus in, um, in Europe. 
Well, um, you, uh, the company uh, grew in America and they have uh, um, experience on, on the Asian markets. Uh, um, but can you just take the American model and uh, export to Europe uh, and be successful here or do you have to modify? If you ask my American colleagues, they would say yes. <laughs> but you're asking me and the answer is no. Um, the, the logistics complexity in Europe is very different from the North, North America or the American continent. So whatever we do here is, um, is a, a big modification from, uh, from the solutions we have in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, what are your goals in Europe? Where uh, do you want to be in, let's say, three years? Well, first of all, we want to develop our new part of business as the warehousing and distribution business. That is something that we want to develop from fairly low level today. Uh, our international business, which we already do today uh, successfully, we think we can replicate a lot of our solutions in the European market and three years from here we should be at least double the size we are today. Double the size, so uh, you have a hard working program. Yeah. Um, I don't want you to stop. Uh, Munich is a fair where you can get, make a lot of contacts uh, uh, to reach your targets. Thank you very much, Eddie, for visiting me on the Red Sofa. Thank you. I'll come and tell you in two years where we are then. Thank you.